And now let's fast forward to 2041. The best-selling author Kai Fu Li knows the world of tech like no other. Once president of Google China and a senior executive at Microsoft and Apple, he's now CEO of Sinovation Ventures. And he's out with a new collection of short stories that imagines how artificial intelligence will shape the way we live and work for better or for worse. And here he is speaking to our Hari Srinivasan about why AI could in fact be the economic issue of our time. Christian, thanks. Kaifu Lee, thanks for joining us. Now, we have spoken before about artificial intelligence a few years ago. You're out with a new book now, which is kind of a mix of sci-fi as well as a projection into the technologies that might be impacting us in the next 20 years. And when we think about this uh, kind of socially and structurally, usually people fear what they don't know. And one of the fears that a lot of people have is that artificial intelligence will create a massive shift to our economy where it will leave lots and lots of people out of jobs. Yes. So on the one hand, I think because AI is trying to replicate human intelligence, it will obviously take over some jobs when it's successful. And it will be successful because AI is uh, learning on data and there's more and more data, so AI gets smarter. So I think on the one side, we definitely see substantial job displacements for blue and co white collar jobs, especially those that are routine. But at the same time, there are new jobs being created. Uh, people who have to write AI algorithms, who are repairing robots, or who are collecting data and labeling data, and many more jobs will be created. We just don't know what they are. So we have two engines, one of job destruction and one of job creation. It's hard to tell which ones will go faster. The pessimistic side of me would say, doesn't look good because the destructions will come before the creations. But the optimistic part of me would say, hey, look at all, all of this in the past. It has happened before. Uh, the uh, Industrial Revolution, the invention of automobiles and so on, they were all destroying jobs and creating jobs. And ultimately, there are more jobs and there are more interesting jobs at the end of the day. So I can't tell you definitively, but uh, uh, there will be a lot of turmoil and change. So what do you think by 2041, what percentage of the economy as we know it today do you think will be impacted by artificial intelligence? And more important, how do governments and societies prepare for that? You have a whole chapter on this and what kinds of things should we be doing and uh, thinking about? Well, AI will disrupt every imaginable industry. For example, um, we've already seen in the internet space, because of AI, all these internet companies can make all that money, help us become more efficient, but also sometimes becoming uh, brainwashed and uh, perhaps losing our privacy. All financial companies will also become AI driven. Uh, stock trading will be done by AI. Um, and in transportation, we'll be using autonomous vehicles all the time. We don't have to buy cars. Uh, or own cars and garages will be no longer needed nor uh, or parking, parking lots. Uh, in manufacturing, AI will produce everything and that will essentially drop the cost of labor down to near zero, thereby making products much more available more cheaply, thereby potentially um, uh, eradicating poverty. So this can, I can go on for um, healthcare and education and every industry, so huge changes. And I think the governments really have to do several things. I think one is to regulate uh, the, the use of AI so that it doesn't do all the bad things that could happen. That would be done by humans behind the AI, not AI itself. I think the other is to manage the transition of jobs, jobs lost, jobs gained, how to train the people and also deal with the wealth inequality because uh, with the success of AI, some tycoons will make a lot of money while many jobs will be lost. And also governments will have to rethink what's the future of education. You know, road learning will be useless. We want kids to have creativity and compassion and teamwork and how do you train uh, for that? And, and finally, the economy will change because if cost of goods comes down a lot, uh, and if people um, change the way they, they believe uh, that, that their lives revolve around having a good job and making money, uh, but, but many jobs are gone and 
um, pr pr products are becoming cheaper, then accumulation of wealth is probably not the only thing that matters. How do we change that mindset? And what does the government need to do with the economy? So there, the list goes on. There are many uh, big headaches, but I think at the end, when end of the day, when this is all done, we'll no longer have to do routine jobs and we can do work that we love rather than repetitive work that we currently hate. So it's a good outcome, but very tough process to getting there. You know, one of the interesting chapters you had was on uh, education and how essentially kids with different learning styles could have the equivalent of an AI companion that adapts, almost listens, and helps those students achieve in a way that perhaps individual teachers just do not have the time to focus per student. Yeah, that is something I envision uh, for the future because today's education, uh, the, there just isn't enough um, tuition to afford the one teacher per student on an individual basis. Yet we know everyone is different. They're uh, slow in, each child is slow in learning something. And an AI companion or teacher can find that and build a stronger foundation. Each child is excited, excited by something, perhaps basketball, perhaps superhero, and that could be integrated with the curriculum to make learning more fun. And also each child may have some you know, inner capability that needs to be distilled. And of course a human can do that, but there isn't enough time. So I believe in the future, a lot of the optimizing will be done by AI. AI can teach a course, give an exam, uh, build the foundation, make things uh, interesting, but the human teacher will actually evolve to be more of a mentor coach to each student in terms of uh, having the right values and knowing right and wrong, learning creativity, learning to work with the other people, um, and learning to be a good contributing member of the society and team. So, so by taking the routine and the individualizing, optimizing part of the teacher's work today, uh, I think we make the, uh, everything better for both the teachers and the students. The teacher's work's more interesting. The student learns what he or she needs from the AI and from the student uh, simultaneously. Right now, there's a lot of talk about when, for example, autonomous driving will hit the streets. And at the core of that, besides the technology being refined enough, there's also this ethical dilemma that people wonder about. I mean, we call it the trolley problem, right? How do we program ethical decisions into a machine that is driving itself? Should I swerve to avoid this one person and if the cost is that I hit these other two people, how am I making those kinds of decisions? I mean, because AI is only as good as the humans that program it. Right, uh, those specific decisions about, um, about um, priority of um, uh, you know, two children lives versus two adult lives, that's I think beyond the capability, the capability of a programmer. The programmer would set some goals um, and then the AI would look at all the data and figure out for itself how to achieve those goals. So those goals could be getting from place A to place B as quickly as possible um, and without uh, hurting anybody in the process. And, and then the AI would based on the data to do a better and better job over time. And, and this is a product you have to launch and then it gets better over time. So the story in the, in the book talks about uh, what's the process of launching? What's good enough to launch? It seems like you have to be better than humans, but still mistakes will be made. Then what happens? And there are different mistakes than humans would make. But the good thing is um, it will improve over time. I mean, we're seeing this today when Tesla launched the summoning feature. People made a joke and said it was horrible in the first few weeks. Then they collected all the data, then the feature worked great. So that, that's the same thing that will happen. So the question is, do we, as the human race, uh, have the uh, courage uh, or the audacity to accept that there is an intermediate process towards a future where perhaps 90% of all the fatalities can be cut down 
but there is a price to pay uh, along the way. So that is the moral question we, the human race, have to answer. We have the capacity to automate defense systems, or would we ever allow an AI to determine who is an enemy and wipe them out? Yeah, all technologies are a double-edged sword. Think about drones that can automatically shoot to kill. Um, it's, uh, some, there are some positive attributes uh, in the sense that if all wars were fought by autonomous weapons, then people, soldiers don't die as much. And um, autonomous weapons may be more accurate, so there would be less collateral damage. However, there is an overwhelming negative, which is uh, building a drone that can recognize someone and kill that person can be done for $1,000 today. And that lowers the barrier of assassination, one at a time, or genocide, 100,000 at a time, by terrorists and um, non-state actors. Furthermore, uh, they, they are very likely not to get caught because it's just a drone or a robot. Uh, who, who is going, how can you tell who's behind it? So I think, there really needs to be effort. This is probably one exception in the book where I generally feel technologies will tend to go the positive direction, even if there are concerns. Autonomous weapon is one where I feel regulation is needed today, and people really need to uh, put their minds to this problem because it's weapon, it's lives, it's directly taking lives, um, and it's putting a, a powerful weapon in the hands of potentially malicious or evil people. So I, I wonder right now, there is not, or at least there doesn't seem to be any kind of global agreement on what the rules of the road of AI should be, what kind of ethical standards, you know, every researcher should be uh, taking into consideration before they publish something, whether this can be used against you or against humanity. I mean, between now and 2041, that infrastructure seems more and more necessary. Yeah, there are so many problems. There's, you know, how do we store the personal data um, and um, who gets the right to use it? What's the uh, consequence for a violation? And also deep fakes. What if a video is distributed for, that says you committed a crime that you didn't commit, but no human or AI can tell it's, not, it's real or not? So, so all those things, I think, need to be put in place. Um, and also um, uh, fairness. Uh, how do we detect an AI that might discriminate against people or do things unfairly? Um, and also, how do you hack into an AI system? What if you fooled an AI and um, uh, fooled the autonomous vehicle into thinking a stop sign is not a stop sign and thereby having someone um, killed, though it looks like an accident? So the, the list goes on, yeah. You know, the pandemic is part of some of the storylines that you have coming 20 years from now. But I wonder well, what the impact of the pandemic now is today on the workplace. So what has AI shown that it can do pretty well? Where has it fallen short? Well, actually, AI has done a, a, a great job in advancing the combination of AI and healthcare. Um, my day job is an investor, and we've invested in a company that uses AI to uh, find drugs uh, for rare diseases. Um, and it's able to do that much faster than humans. So that has the long-term impact of make, potentially making rare diseases treatable because they were not economical enough for large pharmaceutical companies to go after them because of the cost to invent the drug um, to fix the problem. But now AI can reduce the cost. Another example is the automation of the laboratory. People might assume that factories are easier to automate. Assembly line workers are easier to replace. But actually, many jobs in the factory require a high degree of dexterity that's very hard to replace. But, um, but lab technicians or the people who currently manually do the COVID tests, those jobs that they do, if you think about it, are relatively routine and repetitive. And once you cover COVID. Um, so, you know, we invest in a company that uh, makes one giant robot that can do 120,000 COVID tests per day. And that robot with some modifications can work on CRISPR, on growing uh, organoids, and can um, 
can work in molecular biology, can do drug discovery. So essentially, lab technicians are being replaced with these robots, making it much faster to, to, to invent new drugs and treatments and do experiments. So there are many um, technologies like that that are becoming faster, robots for social distancing, the use of um, robotics, we see that a lot. Um, and, and of course, also uh, people working from home, and this is more in the US than, than in perhaps in China, um, makes the workload digitized. Then AI can be applied to either replace or enhance parts of those workloads. And my, I, I would predict that's probably what we'll see in, in the coming years. Do, do you think that we are going to recognize, because of this pandemic and this disruption, that humans should be providing a different type of value? Don't compete with the computer, do something complementary, do something that the computer or the robot cannot do? I think that's uh, wise advice. Um, and, and AI is fundamentally limited in, in certain areas. And, and, and also what AI is good at is generally things that we don't want to do anyway. Uh, you know, routine work, repetitive work, whether it's blue collar or white collar, uh, those are not the most rewarding. They're not really uh, delivering self-actualization to many people. Um, so if we can be elevated from that and open up a whole wide spectrum that you, if you're creative, then go after it because the society has the wealth for people to explore their dreams. Um, and if you, um, are someone who's very warm, then you should spread your warmth, whether it's in an elderly home or a foster home. So I think people can really do what they're passionate about and, and find things that they can contribute to the society, even though the contribution may not be measurable in money, but it might be measurable in some, some other way, such as making the world uh, a better place. The book is called AI, 10 Visions for the Future 2041. Co-author Kai Fu Lee, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Harry.